All right, friends, welcome back to the channel. And today I am going to show you another quick way to upgrade your content and to create some uniqueness to your content so it does not look lame to Google and just not rank it. So one of the ways to do this, first and foremost, is to make sure you're starting off with a good quality structure to your posts and additionally then scrape the best content you possibly can for all the components of that post and combine it together so you have what we call the uber post. Now there's some pieces of this that I am not going to cover in this video because otherwise this video would be an hour long. I'm just doing bits and pieces so you of course need to make sure you check back with the channel to learn all the parts to put them together. And this one in particular today we're going to talk about using templates for your blog posts then additionally how to generate some uniqueness under each subsection. Now, one of the main benefits of using PDFs or templates and so forth, and we talked about this a lot with Claude 2. If you're not familiar with Claude 2, it can take up to 100,000 tokens. Basically, you can near upload an ebook to it and use that as a reference to train the AI to give you the responses that you want. So that is a huge benefit. Very tough to do with ChatGPT because it cannot handle that much, and the responses are definitely different. I prefer Claude 2. But again, there are workarounds for both of these systems. So what we want to do is to go first and foremost and start with just a layout or an outline for our content. Ahrefs does an amazing job at this. They have a tool, obviously, but the educational component or side of their work is awesome as well. So I stumbled upon this a while back. It was uh, blog post templates and how and when to use them. This is on the Ahrefs blog, but there's also a video about this as well in their channel, which is awesome. And it talks about using, you know, every blog post is different, but most aren't that different. So the idea is there is structure to blog templates so that you can rip these out much faster and they suit kind of like the intent that we oftentimes see online when people are searching. And there are four blog post types in this one in particular to look at. One is called the list post, the step-by-step -step guide, the expanded definition, and the beginner's guide. Now, what they do is they go through each one of these and look at the general layout with key components of each of these. Now, what we want to do is to take this information and we want to feed this into the AI to say, hey, I want to create a list post, but this is specifically how I want you to do it. Okay, so don't make it up. Don't do whatever you want to do. Make it just like this. So the cool thing about this blog is you can go right over here to the left and do you see that copy link? We can just grab that and that is a link specifically to this section. And we can go into ChatGPT and we can get or extract that template outline. So of course with ChatGPT, you need to be able to make sure you have WebPilot turned on for this. And I go review this content and give me a summary and I drop that link right in there. So what it does is it gives me a summary of what's on that page. And of course, it talks about the list post, step-by-step -step guide, et cetera. Now, what I want is I want to create a prompt for the list post with detailed instructions based on recommendations from the article. So what it did is it extracted that. And you can see here that it has basically created a format for that list post. Okay, and that's exactly what I want. Now. What we want to do here is I'm going to scroll down a little bit is now when I want to write that list post, I need to select what I'm going to be talking about, for example, right? So we need to have done our keyword research ahead of time. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but I'll just create a mock one here as I'll show you just so that we can get it to write an outline for us based on this structure. So what I wrote here is I want you to write an SEO optimized blog our optimized list post using the following structure exactly. Read through it and respond okay when you understand, and it did so. Now what I did is I said that the main keyword for this post is best espresso drinks. Now obviously what you wanna do is uh, for a list post, make sure it is a uh, congruent list post keyword, and then you'll have a better chance of that actually the article making sense. So best espresso drinks, obviously that's going to be a listicle based article. Now, what did I do for the content down here? You have a lot of options on how you do that. You can go use a tool like ZimWriter. You can scrape pages and pull H2s, individual information, et cetera. But another thing to do, which is probably one of my favorite ways is to just go into YouTube. 
So if I were to grab this main keyword here, or long tail, and I go into YouTube, and all I do is just paste that in, what I'm going to get is a bunch of content on that topic. And what we're looking for is just something that has a nice list-based feel to it. So we go down here, espresso machines, that's not what I'm looking for. Espresso drinks, okay, so there may or may not be a lot of them there. That's a 10-minute video, so he probably does talk about a number of them. But all the way up here at the top, this is the one I ended up selecting, all espresso drinks explained, okay? So that video is about 7 minutes and 38 seconds. It's probably going to have a number of different drinks in here. You can scroll down on the chapters. You can see that he covers a number of different things. And so that's going to work probably pretty well for our list. So I'm just going to use this as an example. So what I do is I right click on that. I copy the link address. Okay. And then what I do is go over here to youtubetranscript.com. You've seen me use this tool a number of times. So you paste the URL in there and you hit go and it will give you the transcript. So a lot of people ask me about podcasts. Uh, it, unless you can grab or that podcast transcript is on the page then you're going to need to try and find that podcast episode on YouTube. But a lot of sites actually do post the transcript as a blog post as well, so that way you can do the same thing if you want to use a podcast for content. So here we're going to copy that entire transcript, and then what I do is I go back into ChatGPT or Claude. I'm going to show you there's a big difference between these two, but I paste that in there. So I'm telling it I want you to use this content to make that list post. And then what it is going to do is it's going to give me that output. Now, it is always hit and miss. So again, people always say, well, that doesn't work all the time. Of course it doesn't because it's AI. So you do have to make sure that everything is consistent. Like for example, here it says 12 must try espresso drinks, but yet there is not 12. Okay. So that was a little frustrating. And this is one of the fundamental differences, in my opinion, between ChatGPT and Claude 2. So, but this is generally the outline that we can we get. You see that it has explanation, examples, action steps, et cetera, mostly from what we had pasted in previously with a call to action. Now, I didn't particularly like this very much. So I went over to Claude to test this out as well. Okay, so I went over to Claude and I said the same thing. I want you to write an SEO optimized blog post using this structure exactly. Okay, and as it did so, it says, I understand the structure you want, and then I paste it in the transcript. Now, you could see that this is a very different output. Okay, so number one, we have 10 best espresso drinks, and then it has that intro. It did generate the table of contents for me again. And for here, we have our H2s, and it went through, and we have 10, which is exactly what we should have. Then we go to final tips, and we have that conclusion. Okay. Now, the important thing to remember is, is that how complicated does any post really need to be? That depends upon the structure of the kind of post that you have. For example, 10 best espresso drinks is not going to be a super complicated content piece. So this, for some people, might suffice. You know, we'll have to look at the uh, SERPs to see what's currently showing and what kind of content is ranking, but that will probably be good enough. It's just a listicle, simple listicle post. Okay. Now, if we want to do something a bit more complicated, then we could move up to the next one, which is the step-by-step -step definition or step-by-step -step guide, should I say. So when you do this, you would go down and you would actually repeat that same process is to go and find that link down here. And there it is. Grab it. And then, or what I did is, I think actually it pulled it all from here. Yeah, it did. So I would go back and say, give me a prompt for the step-by-step -step guide. And it would go through this again just to get that output. Okay, so once I have that information, and I'm going to go over to Claude 2, and I'm just going to enter in the same thing that I just did, right? But this time I want to craft a how-to or a step-by-step -step guide, okay? And here I'm just going to put in something simple here, which is how to make espresso, right? Obviously this is not, I would do keyword research, everything else I just mentioned. I'm just doing this here for an example. And so I said the keyword for this post is how to make espresso. So what it did is to create that step-by-step -step guide for making espresso at home. Okay, so how to brew barista quality espresso at home in five easy steps. It used the template outline that was recommended from Ahrefs. 
This time it did actually label these sections. It said introduction. Obviously we wouldn't have that in there. We would delete it. Trustworthy intro. So it did go through this and say, as a coffee enthusiast with years of exp experience handcrafting espresso drinks, very nice. Okay, so obviously we would delete this section. Then it came up with a problem statement. Many people find espresso intimidating to make at home between dialing and grinder, blah, 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 and learning how. There's a decent learning curve. And then created a what to expect. In this foolproof guide, you'll learn how to grind, dose, blah, blah, blah. This is exactly what was recommended from HREFs, okay? So then it laid it out into specific steps, and it used the YouTube video that I had pulled the transcript from. Invest in a coffee grinder, dial in the grind, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's a very simple step-by-step -step guide. This content looks a little thin. Now, it depends upon your topic. So again, go into the SERPs and see what's currently showing, but you can certainly create some more uniqueness to each of these sections. So rather than just using an, a video to create the entire piece of content, you could see what happened. It was kind of thin. I can make better quality in under each one of these sections specifically. So what I did is just grab this article here, and you can go stick this into a Word, uh, into a document, a Google Doc, and that way we can take each one step by step and make it better. So here's what you can do. You can go into the first step and you can say, invest in a Burr coffee grinder. Okay, well, what would what additional information would we want to know here? Okay, invest in a Burr coffee grinder. We might look at why, okay, or just have some individual or additional information about that. So if I go into YouTube and then I type that in, okay, the first one that came up, and this is the one that I ended up using for this demo, Kitchen Equipment Expert Shares Top Pick for Burr Grinders. Now, that's about a five-minute video, which is pretty much ideal. It's not a 45-minute video just talking about burr grinders. We don't need all of that. And again, I'm going to grab that information. I'm going to drop that into YouTube Transcript. And then what I'm going to do is go back into Claude, and then we're going to get some better pieces of info for that section. So what I wrote is expand on this section. And then I wrote the section in there. Right, So I just copied and pasted that in there, and I said, use the content from the following, and I dropped that YouTube transcript in there. You could see here it shows up as a paste.txt. So what it did is it expanded on step one, and it did a really solid job on that. So you could see here that it says the most important piece of equipment, blah, 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 is the Burr Coffee Grinder. It did mention America's Test Kitchen. You can either reference that if you like and include a link back to the video or you could have it removed, which I did here in a second. So it goes on to explain why you would use a burr coffee grinder in particular, and then it wraps up here and says, investing in a quality burr grinder gives you complete command over ground size, etc." Okay, so it fits nicely within the context of the article. So here, if it also says in entry-level options like the Barazza Encore, that is, you can obviously stick a Amazon link in there for affiliate, okay, or an image or whatever you want to stick in there. So that's a nice opportunity for that as well. If you want to remove reference to that brand, then all you have to do is say rewrite it and remove the reference to this. And now we have our section. We can copy that and then just go back over here as I've already done and then just paste it into that section. Now step one is better. Move on to step two and we would repeat this process. So in this section, you might take that and say perfect espresso grind, and then go up into here. As we do that, we can look at this and say grind size. That's a nice one right there. So here we have about 11 minute video. So it's a lot of content here on grind size. So I can go through that same process and further flesh out and upgrade step two. So you would basically repeat this process through all of the steps to create some quality unique content. Then you can, again, use links out to where you source the information from, et cetera. You can drop any of those videos into the page as well. And that way you have a nice fleshed out quality content piece. Now, those of you who might be wondering, what do you do with Surfer SEO? What do you do with Neuron Writer? Those can, of course, be integrated. I always try to start off with writing the article first and then you know, of course, you would do your keyword research first, but then write the article and then make a good quality article and then drop the article into Surfer 
or drop it into Neuron Writer because a lot of times that pollutes your thinking and just having this very mechanical process to try to get the search engine rankings that you want rather than writing a good content piece. So if you write a good content piece and then drop it into there, then you try to optimize it a little bit by adding some additional NLP keywords and so forth where it uh, recommends it, okay? Then all that's left there is to write to get some good images on there, mid-journey, et cetera, and you have an awesome piece of content. And of course, if you're paying attention, these are great options right here to have additional splinter links. For example, in this one, it says invest in a Burr coffee grinder. Why not create a sub topic, how to, how to select the best coffee grinder or Burr coffee grinder versus whatever blade, and then increase or add a link in here to go to that piece of content especially if this um, type of piece of content that you're using is more like a hub-based article that is going to link within a bunch of other articles within that topic cluster, okay? So this is a pretty simple process. It's not the only way to do things, but it is a great way to beef up the quality of your content, make it more unique, and combine different resources into one article, and of course using a really tested and proven strategy for templates used by Ahrefs. So if you like this video, you like this kind of process, interested in more ideas, do me a favor, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, comment down below, let me know your thoughts, and of course, subscribe to the channel so you get notified anytime I come up with new ideas or want to show you some new stuff to help you utilize AI for success. Thanks for watching.